Welcome to Talk Football with Tyron and welcome to our video today. When the player understands that you are working for them, it's not about philosophy to play 1 4 4 2 or 1 4 3 3 or play uh, more defensive in a counter attack or dominate the game. It's, it's about that they feel they, fe they feel that you want the best for them. That is the, 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 the most uh, uh, important thing. Philosophy, methodology, um, style of football, or different ideas, I think, are not important. First of all, they need to understand the player that all that we are going to do are not to punish them. Always, always if we are not going to give one week uh, off, it's because we want the best for them. It's not because we don't want that then they uh, enjoy life. It's because they are professional. Mauricio Pochettino is set to start his spell at Stamford Bridge on the 1st of July 2023. Mauricio Pochettino has signaled a number of players who do not belong to his plans and we are seeing a lot of departures from Chelsea. We are also seeing players who are to be given a high priority in the Pochettino shortlist and we are going to discuss how Pochettino is going to implement his system and his tactics with those players. Not forgetting that Pochettino has since sent close to 10 players away from Chelsea and others linked to potential moves elsewhere. This shows that there will be a major tactical shift at Chelsea. For example, you can clearly see from the team that won the Champions League in 2021 that only three players from the starting 11 are the ones who have remained. Majority of the team has been overhauled since this is a new project and a new system. Pochettino is famed for his famous 4-2-3-1 formation and we have done a video on his tactics. The link is in the top right hand corner. Check out that video and see how he sets up his teams. So, Mauricio Pochettino's first task at Chelsea was streaming the squad. And from this clip that you're seeing up here, is that we have given at least two players per position in the Mauricio Pochettino project. We have scheduled Kepa, who has been linked to be the number one, and we are yet to see if Chelsea will go back to the market to look for a goalkeeper. The fullback areas have been picked with Chilwell and Cucurella down the left back and Rhys James and Gusto. These are just some of the players that we expect will play at Chelsea next season. Note that we have not included Chukomeka and Lewis Hall, but they will also be included in the Chelsea's starting 11 and substitution team. But before we start this tactical analysis, like, share and subscribe to this channel and we'd like to appreciate you for your time and effort in helping us reach a thousand subscribers. Now, we are going to analyze the first position that Mauricio Pochettino has scheduled to improve and that position is the goalkeeper position. We are going to identify who best fits this position in the Chelsea squad. But rumors have been going around that Pochettino actually prefers the Chelsea number one goalkeeper Kepa Arizabalaga to start in goal as the first number one choice of a goalkeeper. The departure of Mendy to the Saudi league signifies that Chelsea will go in for a backup goalkeeper because Kepa is set to retain his position as the number one. So why is Pochettino going for Kepa? Unlike Hugo Lloris, Kepa is able to give Pochettino one key dimension in his game, and that is build-up play. Kepa this season had a pass accuracy of 80.94, second to Manchester City's goalkeeper Ederson. Therefore, Kepa is able to ping long ball to the fullbacks. He's also to play one two touches with the center backs and the holding midfielder kepa also has a vision of picking runners in behind the opposition defensive line and this ball playing attribute that kepa possesses that we've seen in previous seasons under mauricio sari is one thing that pochettino is a keen to develop in his team kepa is also known to be a good super keeper 
unlike Edward Mendy, he's able to step off his line and clear the ball when the team is playing with the high line and the other team wants to catch them through long balls over their defensive line. And these are some of the key strengths that Kepa offers to Mauricio Pochettino and that's why he will give Chelsea an added dimension. I will do a video of how a ball playing goalkeeper improves a team. The second position is the center backs. We are going to analyze which center back pairing is best fit for Chelsea. Now, my pick is Thiago Silva, who I believe is experienced and I still think that he has one season in him to lead the Chelsea defense. I want somebody who is experienced in the backline. His partner is Benotti Badiashil. They have played together sometime this season and they have formed a strong concrete partnership. And this is a partnership that I would like to be fostered next season. So why have I decided on Thiago Silva and Badiashile? Thiago Silva offers what we call experience in the backline and his good, excellent passing accuracy, he's able to pick the holding midfielder, he's able to link with Badiashile who will open the left flank of the pitch since he's left footed. And this is something that Chelsea really need. The experience of Thiago Silva in the backline is going to make Badiashile to be comfortable and be able to improve as a centre-back. So, do I mean that Colwell and Fofana will not play? No, what I mean is that these two have the best pairing. Badiashile's aerial ability and ability to drop and win aerial duels will enable Thiago Silva to act as a sweeper role in behind since he has done this perfectly for the past four seasons at Chelsea and PSG. Our next position is the fullbacks. Fullbacks are key to a Pochettino system since they generate the width for the team. And we know in the right back position there is none other who is better than Rhys James when he is fully fit and he's ready to go. He is one of the best offensive fullbacks. In the left back area, Ben Chilwell is also a good offensive fullback, and we have seen this through his goal contributions and assists. Let's start with the right back area. So, this right hand flank is suited for two players. Gusto and Rhys James. But when Rhys James is fit, he starts. Why? Because Rhys James has the potential of becoming the next Chelsea captain. Rhys James in this position knows how to hug the touchline. He knows how to dribble past opposition wingers and fullbacks to evade pressure and proceed with the ball high up the pitch. Rhys James also knows to how to link up with his winger, when to overlap his winger and when to underlap his winger. Rhys James' experience in the Premier League, he knows to and he's one of the best at whipping crosses from deep for his forwards to head goals in goal since he has one of the best crossing abilities in the Premier League. Rhys James also knows how to cut in and attack the right half space and make long range shots on goal and this has seen him score a lot of goals especially during the Thomas Tuchel era. Rhys James in this position also knows how to link up with players in the far post. Another key strength with Rhys James in the right back position is that his experience playing as a midfielder at Wigan enables him to receive the ball as an inverted fullback and this may enable him to progress the ball higher up the pitch. Rhys James is experienced in the Premier League and therefore is the best fit for this right back position. Now, down the left hand flank, because Pochettino prefers an offensive fullback who is able to overlap underlap and score goals, Ben Chilwell is the best for this role when fit. Ben Chilwell likes to hug the touchline. He's good at receiving the ball in the wide area, but his technical ability when pressed is not quite the best. But Chilwell has the pace to run and attack the wide areas of the pitch when the winger cuts in. And he has an eye of whipping in crosses for the wingers and the forwards advancing. Ben Chilwell is also known for his high, high ability and high threat while underlapping. Sometimes he allows the winger to stay wide and go 1v1 with the fullback while he underlaps to receive the ball and shoot 
from this inside left channel and that is something that we've seen Ben Chilwell do quite often now another thing that we've seen about Ben Chilwell this season is his ability to make runs beyond the opposition's defensive line and this is an example of a goal he scored during the FA Cup final last season when Thiago Silva picked him from this position. The problem with Ben Chilwell is that after he came back from his long knee injury, he has not been able to defend quite well and therefore most opponents have been able to bypass him during the offensive side of the game. But he has tried to use his pace to recover in these situations, but under a concrete solid system, you can see the best of Ben Chilwell. The next position is the double pivot position. This is the position of the two holding midfielders who are playing in front of the defense line. And this position is key to how the team moves. And the first player to occupy this position on the pitch is Enzo Fernandez. He's the first name in the team sheet. He's very consistent, very reliable, and free from injuries. Enzo Fernandez is likely to be paired with Moises Caicedo, who is likely seen to be joining Chelsea. Enzo Fernandez is keen on dropping deep during build-up and can play as the sweeper, while Caicedo can play as the box-to-box -box defensive midfielder like Golo Kante. Caicedo in this position is renowned for his excellent ball distribution and passing ability, able to pick players in the wide areas, able to loop lob balls on top of the opposition line and linking up with Caicedo, who is also an excellent short passer and is keen to dribbling and moving the ball and the team high up the pitch. Caicedo is also good in this position because he is one of the best defensive midfielders in the league and is able to win the ball high up the pitch, give it to Enzo Fernandez who can continue dictating the tempo of the game. This is a partnership that we anticipate to see at Chelsea. In defensive areas, the two can be able to sit in front of the two center backs. They can form a tight bond whereby they are able to intercept opposition passes who try to pass the ball through midfield and with Enzo's passing ability he can be able to launch counter-attacks for the runs of Rhys James and wingers. Caicedo is also a keen in dropping deep to fill in for fullbacks advancing and this may give a lot of license and freedom for Rhys James and Ben Chilwe to push high up the pitch. Like Eric Dyer, uh, Pochettino prefers his defensive midfielder to be dropping in between the center backs to give them numerical superiority. And this is something that Caicedo and Enzo Fernandez can both do. But in my tactical analysis, I'll give a clear way of doing this. Now, the next position is the attacking midfielder, the creator of the team. Our pick for this position is none other than Christopher Nkunku. We've done a video of him. Link is in the top right hand corner. His substitute is Mason Mount, whose future is yet to be decided, and Kane Chukwomeka, who's yet to be experienced to occupy this role. So what does Christopher Nkuku do? Christopher Nkuku plays as a second striker just behind a striker. His ability to pick threaded balls through the oppos opposition's defense line to create chances for his striker. Nkuku is very physical and we expect him to succeed in the Premier League because of his physicality. He can either play his number 9 to score a goal or alternatively, he can use his excellent position to run at defenders, go past them and score a goal since we have seen he's a keen at dribbling past opponents. Another key facet that the attacking midfielder is required to is to know when to move to the wide areas to link up with the wingers to create numerical superiority over the fullback and attack the half space channels by giving cutbacks and shooting from these positions. That is something we expect to see for Christopher Nkuku next season. 
the wing areas, the wingers, the wide areas. So how does Pochettino want his wingers to play? Who are the preferred picks? My preferred pick is Raheem Sterling as a right winger. He performed exemplary in this position in the 18-19 season when they won the Premier League at Manchester City and Mikhailo Modric down the left wing. People will ask why have I not picked Madweke but I'm going to answer that question next. So what are the characteristics of wingers in a Pochettino team? One, they must be fast. These wingers must be able to receive the ball behind the opposition line from balls from Kepa or the two center backs. They must be able to take on their fullbacks 1v1. Modric and Sterling are able to do this quite effectively, beating their wingers in a 1v1 situation, combining pace and excellent footballing ability to be able to bypass the fullbacks and score goals. This is something that both the players can do. Alternatively, there is also another thing is they are able to hug the touchline and stay wide during build-up to enable them to receive the ball in space. And once they receive the ball in space in these positions, they may create gaps for the fullbacks to underlap or the attacking midfielder to advance. Some instance, the winger might cut in and the fullback might overlap, as you see with Mudrich and Ben Chilwell, where the fullback can now attempt to make a cross in these situations. Another key facet that wingers must possess is excellent off the ball work rate, knowing when to press and when to sit back. Another key thing that a winger should have in a Pochettino system is the ability to thread balls and switch of play from flank to flank so that they may be able to be isolated in a 1v1 situation. I prefer him selling down the right because if he attacks the byline, he's able to make accurate crosses through this position. He's able to link up with the attacking midfielder in a 1-2 situation, receive the ball in space and score goals. Raheem Sterling is good at playing this type of role. Rhys James can either push forward and play as an underlapping fullback when Raheem Sterling decides to start wide. So why is Madweke not favored for this position? Madweke likes to run at his opponents, beat them as he dribbles past them. But rather than dribbling towards goal, he likes to dribble towards the touchline but since he's left footed he doesn't make the perfect cross in these situations therefore Madweke should improve his game and know when to underlap cut in with his left foot and drive at the opposition defense allowing his fullback most likely Rhys James to have space in the wide areas to attack and this is something that can be coached since he's a young player the next position is the striker position Currently, Chelsea only have one striker, and that striker is Jackson. I have done a video on Jackson, his tactical abilities, strengths, and weaknesses. Link is in the top right-hand corner. You can check the video. So, we know one thing with Jackson is that Jackson is an off-the-shoulder striker. He's a striker who likes to make runs beyond the opposition line. So it's not the strike that, it do, that you expect to act as a target man to receive the ball and lay it to Nkunku. Jackson is like the Timo Werner kind of striker. He likes to make runs beyond the opposition line of defense. Therefore, he's a threat with his pace. Therefore, he can make the opposition line to drop deep, create spaces for Nkunku, who can be receiving ball in space and threading passes for him stalling. Sterling can be making low crosses. Jackson is not quite uh, effective and good on in the air and therefore Sterling can be able to find him through cutbacks and short low crosses. If you try to get him through with long balls and he can try to head a bit with the, with the ball but it's not his greatest strength. His greatest strength is dribbling, running at opposition defenders or running beyond them. Jackson should be comfortable dropping deep, linking up with Nkunku and creating gaps in the opposition 
defense line by drawing defenders out of position so that Nkunku can run beyond him. Remember, Nkunku thrives well as a second striker. Now, the problem is uh, some sources say that Pochettino wants to retain Romelo Lukaku. He can play an effective role since he's strong, big and experienced in the Premier League. But the problem is Lukaku doesn't want to play for Chelsea and he wants to return back to Inter. This is a problem that Pochettino has to deal with before the end of the transfer window. So those are just some few of the tactics. We are going to do a comprehensive tactic of what is the best formation for Mauricio Pochettino and why he must prefer that formation. If you've watched this video till this point, thanks for watching. See you next time.